Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk all about sourdough starters, how to take care of your starter, how you can have a no fuss method with no discard, no waste, always ready when you need it. I'm going to show you just how to do that. My name is Sarah Hardy and you can find me at mymontanakitchen.com where I help women feed their family delicious, fail proof recipes every single day of the week. Also, while they are removing barriers to their success and building healthy habits. That's what I love to help women do. And today, let's talk about sourdough starter. So, I've been doing sourdough for a little over a year, and I've absolutely fallen in love with it. I never buy bread for my family anymore. Um, I just don't, because I'm always able to make everything that we need. You may not be in that season in your life right now, and that's totally fine. But I just want to share how easy it can be to take care of a starter. Um, I hear people say, you know, I, I, say, I tell people that I do sourdough, and they're like, oh, that's just too much work for me. Or I tried it once, but it was too over overwhelming, and I just couldn't stick with it, and I killed my starter. Well, that always makes me pause a little bit because the way I take care of my starter is so simple, so easy, there's hardly anything to it. And so I want to show you exactly how I do that. My starter never lives on my counter. My starter, whose name is Alfred Humphrey, by the way, always lives in my refrigerator unless I'm ready to bake something. So. I'm getting ready to feed my starter because I want to bake something tomorrow or mix something tomorrow. So I'm gonna show you what I do. This is the jar in which Alfred Humphrey lives. So um, you can see uh, there's not much of him left. He's almost all gone. So this means it's time for me to feed my master starter. However, I also have this that has just been sitting in my fridge for like a month or six weeks maybe, for quite a while. And I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. But this is the jar I keep. So if I want, this just lives in my refrigerator. If I want to make something, I pull this out, I take out about 50 or 100 grams of starter, I put it in a clean jar, I feed it in this jar, and then this just goes right back in the fridge and it stays there until I'm ready to bake with it again. Now, because Alfred Humphrey's getting kind of low here, you can see there's not a whole lot of starter left. It's time for me to actually feed this. So that's what I do. I just, I'll feed it. He'll get up to about here. I'll put him in the fridge. Anytime I want to bake something, I'll pull him out, put, 100 grams of starter in a clean jar, feed it in here. This goes immediately back in the refrigerator. I just do that over and over and over again until he gets down really low and then I know it's time to feed this again. So easy. There's no discard. I'm not feeding him every day or every other day. It's not living on my counter where I have to mess with it every day or even every week. There are times that I don't bake every week, but that's totally fine because he just lives in my fridge. And whenever um, I'm ready to bake, I pull him out. Usually with one feeding, it's fine. I don't even have to feed it a couple of times to get it going again. Because it's such a good and active starter, I can feed it once and I'm ready to bake. So let's talk about what happens if you go for an extended period of time without feeding your starter. Over the course of the last year, I've had a couple of surgeries. And of course, recovering from surgery, you're not likely to be wanting to bake sourdough. So, he lived through it, <laughs> totally fine. That's where this comes in. Now this, like I said, has been probably in the fridge for four to six weeks, okay? You can see it's got a nice um, thing of hooch on the top of it here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and take some out and feed this as well. You see, all this starter here is still excellent starter. Now, because it's been four to six weeks, I may need to go a little longer, um, feed it a couple more times. That's what I'm saying, feed it a couple of times before it's good and ready to go. But I used to always pour this hooch off the top. 
but I don't do that anymore. I just stir it in. You definitely can pour it off, but if you like the sourness that comes from sourdough, you can just stir this right back in and then feed as normal. So I'm gonna do the same method for this. I'm going to mix the hooch in, and then I'm going to take out a little bit, put in a separate jar and feed it. And then this is just gonna go right back in my fridge. Now, I don't always keep two jars, okay? That's not necessary. Really, all I need is my start, my master starter that I have here. But I do like to have a backup, a just in case, if you will, um, something happens and you know, that's not happened to me in a year of doing it. Last summer, we traveled for like six weeks. He just lived in my fridge, was totally fine. When I got back, pulled him out, fed him a couple times, and he was happy as could be. So a lot of times I feel like we overcomplicate sourdough and we think, oh, it's so hard and everything has to be just perfect for it to work, but it doesn't. Sourdough is a lot hardier than we give it credit for. And it really is difficult to actually kill your sourdough starter until there's no bringing it back. So as long as there's not mold on it, you're good. You could, I have even seen, like if I have left my sourdough out, say on the counter overnight, and I was, I was planning to bake with it, but then I didn't bake and it, maybe it just lived on my counter for a couple of days. Even that, it gets like this thick, hard layer on top of it. I just pulled that off after several days, mind you, of sitting on my counter not being fed. I just pulled that thick crust off the top, scooped some starter out from underneath, and I fed it, and it took longer to rise, but it still worked. So like I said, we don't give enough credit to sourdough as to how hardy it is. It really lasts for a long time. So that's how I take care of it, and I'm going to show you here exactly how I do it, but this lives in the fridge all the time. When I'm ready to bake, I pull it out. I take a little bit out, put it in a clean jar, add flour and water. This becomes the starter that I use for baking. And this immediately goes right back in my refrigerator until it gets down pretty low. And then I'm going to feed this so I have more volume in my starter jar. That's how I take care of them. Super easy, and that way you're not wasting flour, you're not wasting um, time, and you don't have to try to come up with recipes to use your discard. I'm all about sourdough discard recipes, believe me, I love them, but it could be overwhelming when you feel like you're collecting cups and cups and cups of discard in your refrigerator, and you feel pressured because you feel like you have to bake something with your starter, but you don't. I'm telling you, it's so simple. Just let it live in your refrigerator and it will be fine. Even six, eight weeks, it's fine. And um, I really think that that will be, a, I hope it will be a help to you and help you to see that sourdough doesn't have to be difficult, but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy working with it. And um, so this is just kind of my own method for how I've come up with it. I, when I first got started in sourdough, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I read a lot of articles. I did a lot of research on how to do it because I was scared just because it's something new that I was having to learn. But as I've gone along, I've just kind of developed my own method for how to do it. And this is what really works for me. So I wanted to share it with you and I trust that it will work for you too. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I feed my starter. And we're gonna start with this one that's been in the fridge for a long time. So I'm just going to mix it really well to start with and make sure I get the hooch all incorporated back into the starter. Again, I like the sourness of it. If you don't like super sour sourdough, then you can definitely just pour the hooch off, that's fine. All right, so now the hooch is all incorporated. So I'm gonna take a clean jar and put it on my scale, kitchen scale, tear it down to zero. And then I'm just gonna add some starter to the jar. Ooh. 
about 50 grams. And I always feed feed mine a one to two, two ratio. So that means one part starter, two parts flour, two parts water. So if I have 50 grams of starter, I'm gonna feed it 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water. So I'll go ahead and add my flour. Um, I'm just using all purpose white flour for feeding my starter. That's what I always use. All right, 100 grams of flour, and then I'm gonna add 100 grams of water. Okay, and then I'm just gonna give it a good stir. You want to make sure you incorporate the starter from the bottom of the dish, and then that there's no flour lumps, that you really mix it well. It should be pretty thick there that's what it looks like um and i'm just going to set this in a warm place because this was older and hasn't been fed in so long it probably will take a little bit longer for this one to rise but that's totally fine now i'm going to feed my original starter and this is the one again that i always keep in my fridge you can see there's not a whole lot of starter there so i don't really measure that you know, to see exactly how much starter is here to feed it perfectly. I'm just gonna add some flour, add some water, mix it until it gets to be a good consistency and call it good. Again, don't make it more complicated than it has to be. So I'm just gonna add some flour. Okay, and add some water. Oh. We'll try that much. And then I'm gonna give it a good mix and we'll see what the consistency is, what it looks like. All right, so I think I added too much water. So I'm gonna add a little more flour, which is totally fine. All right. Okay, that's looking better because you want it to be kind of thick. All right, scrape the fork off a little bit. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna set that in a warm spot and we're gonna let it rise. It will probably fill this whole jar, which will be perfect because then I can just use a little bit and then I'll put the rest of this back in my fridge to use at a later date. I wanna answer some questions that have been asked about sourdough. I put a question box in my Instagram stories not too long ago and got some questions. So I'm gonna be answering those. And one of the questions was if I caught my own wild yeast uh, for my starter, and if so, how did I do it? I did not. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I did not do my own yeast, my own starter. My sister has caught her own starter a time or two and has been successful with it. I've never even tried. And maybe someday I'll have to try it just for the fun of it. But I ordered my starter from Glenda Groff. Um, her blog is around the family table. And she will send you, it's like a tablespoon, I think, of starter. She'll send it to you, you just pay shipping. And that's how I got started. So she literally sent me a tablespoon of her starter in a little Ziploc bag and I fed it and it's turned into all of this. <laughs> so uh, that method works. I think it's good to get a starter from a very well-established source. I think that makes a difference. Same with my kefir grains. When I got those going, um, getting some from a friend really made a big difference, I think, in how hardy they were. So that's what I did. There are lots of tutorials out there on how to catch your own starter if you want to out of the air in your home, which is just amazing. Um, so you can definitely check out some of those, but I just got it from a friend. I think that, like I said, that's the best way. You can also look on Marketplace um, on Facebook or Craigslist in your local community and see if there are people in your local community who have sourdough starters that might be willing to give you some. 
You can make a post about it and ask, or you can just search for it. And that might be an option as well. Sometimes they sell sourdough starter at farmer's markets. So we're, um, that's, that's another option as well. Some places that you can look if you want to get a well established starter to get your own sourdough going at home. Another question I had was about what is the best flour to use? So for feeding my starter, I use white unbleached all purpose flour. I used to use exclusively Wheat Montana, not just because I live in Montana, but because I love their flour and I love their products. Um, but recently I found a different flour at Costco and it was a little bit cheaper per pound. So I bought that instead and I've been using that. Um, and that is this organic unbleached all-purpose flour. Um, the brand, I don't even think there is a brand. Maybe it's just the Costco brand. I don't see a brand name on here. But I have I have had good success with this and I really like this brand. So that's what I'm currently using at this moment. If you want to make a healthy, healthier sourdough bread, and this was another question that was asked, how to make sourdough healthy. Um, you can make whole grain sourdough, which I have a whole YouTube video showing you every single step I take to make whole grain artisan sourdough bread. So I will link that in a card um, here or here. I don't know where it will be, but I'll link that in a card. And I'll also put the link in the description box below so you can check that out. But for that, I use Wheat Montana white whole wheat flour, okay? They're Prairie Gold Premium 100% whole wheat made with white whole wheat. And that's what I use for my whole grain loaves. Even when I make a white loaf of sourdough, sometimes I'll add a little bit of this in for more flavor. So, um, you do want to use unbleached flour. You don't want to use bleached flour. So that's one of the questions. Another question was about how to get it soft and fluffy on the inside. I, and I'll just say, if you're gonna be making whole grain sourdough bread, it's gonna be a little more difficult to get that really soft, fluffy texture because whole grain is gonna be a little more dense. I found that uh, a mix of two flours works well. If you're doing THM though, or if you're following the Trim Healthy Mama style of eating, then you want to use whole grain. So a couple of, of tips. One is you could add a little bit of um, gluten, wheat gluten to it. That helps kind of make it softer. Make sure you're getting enough stretch and folds in so the dough is incorporated nicely. And another thing that I do differently now than I did whenever I recorded that full length YouTube video about whole grain sourdough is that instead of doing the um, stretch and folds and then putting it right in the refrigerator in the big bowl. Now, after all the stretch and folds are completed, I let it sit on the counter and I let it rise for hours, six, eight hours until it's at least doubled in size and it gets nice and big and puffy. And then I go ahead and divide it, shape it into loaves and put it right into the bannetons and then put it in the fridge for overnight. And that way it really has more volume to it. And I think that helps to make it a little more fluffy. Um, uh, there was a question about how to make it less sour. Unfortunately, if you're baking with a whole grain, the whole grain is going to tend to be a little more sour because the way the sourdough reacts with the whole grain, it'll be a little more sour. Um, however, if you want to use a Levain or Levain, I'm not even sure how you pronounce that word, L-E-V-A-I-N, I think is how it's spelled, which basically is the method that I showed you that I'm using for my sourdough, where you take just a little bit of sourdough starter, feed it with flour and water, and then you use all of that to leaven your product. Because it doesn't have a whole lot of sourdough in it, of the starter, it's not quite as sour. And of course, we also know that the longer you let something ferment or set in your refrigerator or on your counter, the more sour it's going to get as well. So those are just to answer a few of the questions. Again, I want you to understand that sourdough is not hard. 
It does not have to be hard. I know it seems overwhelming, but it seems overwhelming because it's something new that maybe you haven't done before, or maybe you have tried before and it hasn't worked out very well for you. But this easy, super easy method of taking care of your starter makes it easy. You can do sourdough on your timetable, your terms, and you can feel like you own the sourdough, not your sourdough owning you. So if you have more questions, feel free to go ahead and put them in the comments below. And I would love to see what things you're baking with sourdough. Let me know in the comments too. What's your favorite thing to make with sourdough? I'll see you later.